Hey everybody, and welcome to a craft tutorial. Today I'm going to show you guys how we're going to tie-dye a t-shirt. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. And hit that bell icon. That will alert you to when I post a new video. This right here is the t-shirt that we did. And we used Tulip brand tie-dye from Joanne Fabrics. It's super cheap and you can get it in lots and lots of colors. This one is, I believe, teal, purple, lime, and pink. And it came out really, really cute. And you can see the front end. Here's the back. And we did a swirl pattern. But you guys can do any pattern that you like. But I'll show you guys how to do the swirl one. And then we'll show you all the steps that you need. And in our next video, because this is just part one, in our next video, I'm going to show you guys that you can do HTV on your tie-dyed shirt. So let's go over and we'll start tie-dyeing. We're going to do the wet method of tie-dyeing, which I already pre-washed and dried my shirt. So um, I'm going to just get it wet in this bucket. You don't need to get super soaking wet, just wet enough. And then you want to make sure that you do wring it out. Because you don't want it sopping wet. But what this does is it helps the um, color from the dye spread a little bit easier. Rather than having to soak it with the dye, this will spread it out a lot easier. So you just want to give it a good ring. You just want to make sure it's, like I said, not sopping wet, but damp. So once we've done that, we need to get this. And only because I know that when I film this, I will have already used these. Let me show you really quick. The dye dye kit that we're using is by Tulip. And I have two of them. I have a lime and teal, and then this purple and pink one, which I opened already so that I could get the gloves out and make sure I had all the pieces. So we're going to do a spiral tie-dye on this. So what you want to do is lay out your shirt on your surface. You can use the table, or we're just going to use this wire rack. And you want to take the center or wherever you want to start your spiral and pinch it. And then you just twist your shirt around that pinch. And depending on how neat you want it, you can actually make your sh shirt's folds a little bit neater. But you just basically spiral around that little spot. And it's not super easy to do on a wire rack. It's a little easier on a flat surface. But it's tie-dye, so it doesn't have to be perfect. That's kind of the nice thing with tie-dye. And there's tons of different patterns you can do. This is just one option, but there's lots you can do. And you don't even have to follow a pattern. You can just put your rubber bands on and twist it and swirl it however you want to. So once you've gotten pretty much the part where you can't swirl it anymore, I'm going to take all this and tuck it together. Now, depending on how big your shirt is, it's going to depend on how big your spiral is. This is an adult's large. I'm going to go ahead and pop this off. I'm going to apologize now because my neighbors are outside. And what you're going to do is take your rubber bands and take your spiral and you want to put a rubber band right across the center of your spiral. And you may need to pull it apart a little bit so that you can actually see where your spiral is. And unfold it a little bit. You know, you may have to mess with it just a little bit as you're doing this. And you'll just want to do your rubber bands just like this. Now I only have um, the four colors, so I'm just going to do four rubber bands. And you'll see why here in just a second. So you want to make sure that your rubber bands are crossing fairly close to the center of your spiral. And you can adjust your rubber bands however you wish to. But you can just do it like this. Get this last one across, and you'll see how they're going just right across the center here. Hopefully you guys can see this. So then while that is sitting and getting ready, and I'm going to go ahead and just adjust my rubber bands, we will put the water into our bottles. So all you do is you take your bottle, and you see there's a fill line. And since I'm doing this all excited to bring a measuring cup, I have no idea how much water actually goes in. But you just want to fill it to the fill line. So you fill it to the fill line. You want to put the cap back on, and then you want to shake it until all the powder is dissolved. And you'll see the powder down here at the bottom. So I'm going to do all these off camera, and when we come back, I'll show you guys how to put this on your shirt. 
So now that we have put our dye together, you have to shake them for about a minute a piece, but it's not too bad. You wanna make sure all of your powder is well mixed in. And what you wanna do now is soak one corner or one pie shape of your shirt in the color that you want it to be. Now, because I have four colors, I have eight pie shapes, and I am doing this over a bucket so that I can make sure that I'm not dripping. So I'm gonna do my pie shapes opposite each other so that when I do all four of them, they will all be in different spots. Now, like I said, the, having it wet already is gonna help this dye spread into the fabric, but you do wanna make sure that you soak it pretty well. And we're gonna do the backside as well on this, but you do wanna use a fair amount of dye. And then we'll go ahead and I'm gonna do, let's do the lime green. And the lime green just splashed me. So the lime green, I'm gonna go ahead and do kind of in this center one. Again, this part is all however you guys wanna dye it. You don't have to do it exactly the way anyone else is doing it. That's why tie dye is a lot of fun because you can make it your own. And you can put as much dye on it if you want, as you want, or as little as you want. It's all a personal design thing. So you don't have to be too precise. You just do whatever you want. And these are my kind of crafts. I like the kind of do whatever you want types where you make your own designs. So then I think we'll do the purple. I will say be careful when opening these caps because they do tend to spray a little bit. So I'm gonna do the purple one on this side. And you'll see that in parts it's going to bleed together and that's okay. That's what tie-dye does, it bleeds together. But again, doing it in the wet method I think really gives you a nice coverage. And I wouldn't worry too much if you squeeze a little bit into the other um, pie shapes, it's fine. I wouldn't worry about it. But you do want to get a nice saturation. And we will flip this over and do the other side. So then we're going to do our pink. And our pink is going to go right here. And you can get these packs in really big packs, little packs, do whatever kind of colors you want. They have lots and lots of um, color options. These were just the ones that my store had and that I chose. I just thought these were fun colors. So like I said, I'm just gonna make sure it's well saturated. And then what we're gonna do is carefully flip it over. And then you wanna try to make sure you put the same colors on the um, triangle here on the back side. So I'm gonna do the pink, and you wanna make sure you get a lot in. Now keep in mind that once you have done the tie-dye, once you've mixed up your dye, the dye is only good um, for 72 hours. So if you're not gonna tie-dye anything else, I would just try to make sure you use up as much of this as you can to make sure that you have thoroughly soaked through your shirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my purple. Make sure you're wearing clothes you don't totally care about. I'm having a little purple issue here because my rubber band for the green kind of isn't on the right side of my purple, but it's fine. We'll put the green on. I won't worry too much about it again. This doesn't have to be perfect. That's why I like tie-dye. It's everybody's own whatever they want to do with it. So our green on the one side might be a little funky, but it'll be fine. So again, I am doing this over a bucket. So let's go ahead and do lime green since we have a little fudgy lime green section over here that's gonna be a little weird, but that's okay. No big deal. And then this is the other lime green section, so we're just gonna make sure we get that nice and soaked. And again, this is really all you guys have to do. It's really easy to do. So let me get this finished, and when we come back, I'll show you how to wrap it up. Once you've got your shirt entirely covered in dye, you just want to wrap it securely into some saran wrap or plastic wrap. You're gonna let this sit for about six to eight hours, depending on how vibrant you want your colors. And once that's done sitting, we will come back and show you guys what our next step is. We've let this sit overnight, mostly because had I not, I'd have been rinsing this at 1 a.m. So 
So it's set for about 14 hours. So hopefully, with any luck, it didn't uh, bleed too much or come out really ugly, but we'll see. They say anywhere from about six to eight hours, but you could do more. So what you'll do is you're gonna unwrap um, it from your saran wrap. Make sure you're wearing gloves. I have these different ones on. I didn't like the ones that came with the kit. They still got dye on my hands, so I was not a fan. And then you're gonna take off your rubber bands. And we're just gonna, oh, try not to splash yourself with the rubber bands like I just did. And then you're just going to rinse your shirt and you wanna use like a lukewarm-ish water. Now I do recommend don't do this in like your white kitchen sink or your bathroom sink or tub um, because the dye is pretty bright and so it's gonna get everywhere. So you'll want to make sure, like I'm using my utility tub, um, so you don't care if this one gets messy. And you'll want to rinse it. I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. And you're going to want to rinse it until your um, t-shirt runs completely clear, or the water runs clear. And you can wring it out as you go to help some of that water come out. And you'll see that the colors are going to be intensify a little bit just because you're washing out some of the dye but it's still going to be a really pretty shirt but you do want to make sure that you rinse this really well and you can see like there's a ton of blue dye in this so you just want to keep rinsing and rinsing and this can take a couple minutes once we've rinsed this i'll show you guys what it looks like and this is why i told you don't do this like up in your kitchen sink because it's pretty messy you can see all that blue dye in there if you got this in your kitchen sink, you might end up with some blue dye in your sink. And I don't know, I don't think I'd be real happy if I had blue dye in my kitchen sink. So I just recommend making sure that you do this in a sink that you don't care about. You could do this um, in like a bucket or something as well. But you do want to make sure that you rinse this really, really well. We are going to wash this afterwards. One thing to note, the first few washes, I would say probably three or four of these washes, do them alone. So don't wash this with anything else, especially not your good like white work shirts or blankets or anything like that because the, bleed, the dye is going to bleed some. So do make sure that you follow the direction. You do wash it well. You're going to want to make sure that you are, again, rinsing it really well. And you can see now I'm getting some more of the dark color. I'm getting some more of that purple, a little less of that teal out of the shirt. I did put a lot of the teal dye in here. I partially really like the teal. And now I'm getting some purple. I don't think we'll see too much of the pink rinsing out. But I'm going to finish rinsing this. Obviously, you guys don't have to watch this. Um, and we'll stick it in the washing machine. I'm going to do a warm wash. Um, just a normal wash. Nothing too crazy. And we're going to just go ahead and put a little bit of detergent. So. I would say just a little bit in the bottom of your cap and then you will be good to go. But before we go, let me show you what our um, basics of what our tie dye looks like. I don't know how well you guys can see, it's kind of hard to hold it at this angle, but you can see, look at that. It's gonna be really cool. I'm really excited about this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this washed and when we come back, I'll show you our finished shirt. Here is the finished t-shirt. We did wash this in warm water, no bleach, by itself. That's very important because you don't want to get anything else with the dye. You want to make sure that you do dry this and then you can um, go ahead and start wearing it. They do recommend that you wash this separately a few times um, after you have made it just because some of that color can still bleed. But I have yet to wash it a second time so I'll let you guys know in the comments um, if any of the colors seem to run the second time I wash this. Now, like I said, be um, on the lookout for part two of this video on Wednesday, where I'm going to show you guys how to HTV a tie-dyed shirt. I hope you guys had a great time learning how to tie-dye. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time, and hit that bell icon. That will alert you to when I post a new video. Have a great day, and happy crafting!